Hello and welcome. If you saw the previous video, uh, you would have seen the Singer Futura here. This is Stephanie's uh, Singer Futura. And um, I went through and I sorted out the problem with the tensioner here and also uh, the buttons, the non-responsive buttons here. So they've both been fixed. And I tested the machine and found that it was only doing a very narrow zigzag. While I was editing uh, that video, I was sort of uh, having a wee think about what could be going wrong here. And um, a couple of options went through my mind, but the, one of them was that uh, maybe this switch here was a bit, um, a bit funny. You know, maybe it was stuck internally on the uh, twin needle setting, which does, it limits the zigzag so that, you know, because if you've got the two uh, needles in, in the slot here, what this button here does, what this switch here does, is it, if you could imagine that uh, in between my fingers here is the uh, plate, you know, the hole in the plate, the throat plate hole, and you, uh, if you could imagine that these are the needles, uh, if the full width is still available, so if you had it on single needle and on the widest zigzag, uh, so what could happen there is the needles could actually exceed the uh, limit of the throat plate hole and go outside, you know, and hit actually hit the needle plate. So, you know, it could uh, break needles, snap needles. So what you can do is switch it on to the twin needle and that limits the throw of the zigzag to a narrow zigzag so that the needles don't go outside of the uh, needle plate area. And that's what I thought may have been happening here. Although the switch was on single needle, I just thought maybe that switch was faulty. But if we have a look in the brochure here, just had a, uh, a quick comparison. That's the twin needling, that twin uh, line of zigzagging there. And you can see that the widest zigzag that I could get is nowhere near that zigzagging there. So, you know, my attempt there on the left, that red line, that is still too narrow. That sort of ruled this out of the uh, equation, I thought. Off camera, I just uh, swapped out the board. So this here is the board that came out of this machine, Stephanie's machine. And I put in the other board that I showed you in the video that I had used as a trial run to um, just uh, get to know how to remove the boards that's come out of another parts machine that I've got. And anyway, I installed that into the machine. I'd uh, cleaned up the switch contacts on that board just to make sure that they were all good. And um, voila, it sewed, no problem. So I sort of took the easy option to you know replace the board. I thought that maybe possibly the actuator up in here uh, might have been faulty, but um, yeah, there we go. Look. Nice uh, pattern stitches there. We've got the little uh, dog there. We've got the Greek key there. You can see I've done a little, uh, little bit of balancing here to get it uh, looking right. And we've got the, uh, the little flowers there. And you can see I've been doing a little bit of balancing here. You just need to be careful with the flower pattern uh, with the balancing because um, it can actually sort of look um, <laughs> like something else there. Uh, so yeah, the um, overcasting stitch, there's the um, Paris point, uh, the rick rack. So you know, straight there's uh, some straight straight stitch up there. Uh, back tacking, it's all working. So yeah, I was uh, pretty excited. I had it all set to go and um, I thought I would uh, give the machine a bit of a clean up and I was just cleaning away here. We clean up the top there and I had the machine turned on at the time and it went bang, sizzle pop, all the smoke came out of the machine and stunk up the uh, workshop. <laughs> so um, yeah, I uh, assumed it was a capacitor and I think it is. I looked uh, closely where the smoke was coming from, had a bit of a a sniff test around the area and I think it's a capacitor in the motor so another problem has reared its head I don't think it's going to be a major 
but um, let's have a wee look at uh, replacing the capacitor in the motor today and I'm hoping that um, that's going to be the end of the troubles with this machine and hopefully uh, it'll be a runner from there. The other thing I noticed with the uh, different panels here, see if you can spot the difference. This is from the parts, my parts machine that I took the board that's now in here out of. And this is the original uh, fascia panel for this machine here. But uh, you'll notice that the color, they changed the color of the selected stitch there. So your selected uh, stitch there is, let's take this one for example, this is your basting stitch. And then you've got your Greek key, you've got your stretch, straight stretch stitch, and you've got the dog, right? So to select those options, you you turn this dial here on the front and you get your stitch selection. And it's nice and clear what stitch is selected there. But if you have a look on this one, it's not so clear. See, they changed the color. This is the original. Just yeah, not so clear. It's a uh, sort of a smoky colour on the Perspex front there, just to show you what's selected there. So this is the older style, I'm assuming. This is off a, I would assume, an older machine. Yeah, not so, not as well defined. Whereas on here, it's fairly obvious they went for a sort of a, a yellowy um, highlighter type strip here on the uh, fascia. So yeah, just a little improvement I think that Singer made in the later models. I was actually looking for sort of date, date codes and things like that on this board. This is Stephanie's board. It's, uh, it's, it's faulty, I think. It's uh, got a problem with that zigzagging width issue. Uh, but the cardboard cover that went over there, the little insulating cover, had a date code of 1978 on it. So I'm assuming that this machine here is a 78 vintage. If we have a look on the actual chip, that's the electronic brain. <laughs> I assume the electronic brain is encapsulated in this here. You know, we saw a photo of it uh, in the brochure here. That's the, the little microchip. I'm assuming that that's encapsulated in this package here, this AMI package. I couldn't see any sort of uh, other device that looked like that little square electronic brain on the board here. Just looking at that top line of writing there, 7650, I think that is the 50th of the week, 1976. So they probably had a lot of these chips made in 76, which I think is when the machine was released. They probably used them right through, you know, all the different models, I'm assuming. Uh, so, you know, this chip pro was probably two years old when the machine was manufactured, uh, this being a 1978 uh, machine. So, yeah, I found that interesting. Okay, so, as I said, today's video is going to be uh, replacing the capacitor. So, if we just have a look underneath here, tip the machine on its back. I'll get the uh, bottom cover off here. So as I said uh, in the previous video, I replaced the capacitor in the foot controller. And as far as I know, there's only two capacitors uh, that blow. The foot controller one and this one in the motor. Well, it's not actually in the motor, it's just it's in the motor casing here, so we just need to um, get access to that and just unclip these little clips here on the side. Just remove those just to get this side panel that holds that side panel on there. Oh, yeah, I can smell it. They smell horrible when they blow. And the smoke, I had to air the house out. It just smoked like nothing. The capacitor is just a, a little electronic device like that there. And um, they just 
blow some of the older ones the reefer style i think they're reefer branded uh, they just seem to have a habit of blowing up and um, it doesn't really is not really dangerous at all i i think um, well it could be dangerous i have heard of them starting fires so that's why uh, sometimes you'll see on a foot controller or on a machine to, it says uh, never leave your machine turned on when unattended so I guess that's probably why because the capacitor could blow it could blow short circuit and it could heat up and you know catch fire I guess uh, but the modern ones here they're, they're pretty safe yeah these um, modern capacitors so I've marked this little connector here just so that I know that it it's going to go back in the right position there. This just pulls straight out. That just pulls straight out there. I actually removed the motor from the 2002 model. I needed to to get uh, to the screw here that clamps this uh, board into the bottom of the machine. And the 2002 model is not accessible, as I said in the previous video. Uh, because the screw, the two screws that were clamping it were on an angle and I had to take the motor out to uh, get a direct access to the screws there. But this, this setup is slightly different to the 2002 model. Yeah, it's not, not really a huge deal to get out. I'll start by just flipping the little switch. That's the on-off switch here. It's linked to this switch here. That's your uh, off position. Uh, that's your slow speed and your full speed positions there. And that just needs to just flip off there. You know, they're, they're really nice and easy to work on these. Take the uh, drive pulley off here. I'll just loosen that in the meantime. Just loosen that drive pulley there. And then I want to release the belt tension, I think, to get that pulley off nice and easily. And that's done by uh, loosening this locking grub screw here. That one there. You don't need to take it right out, but I just loosen it off there. And then gently just um, push out this little, there's a little shaft in here. This little shaft here, that there just pushes back. That's got an eccentric pin on the end of it, and that's used for setting the motor belt tension. So I'll just, uh, I'll just push that back out there to release that from the motor block down in here. I can see the motor block's not in very good condition. It's starting to disintegrate, but I'm not sure whether I've got another one. I'll uh, have a wee look at it later. Just push that out of the way. And that releases the, the motor now. And you can see that releases the belt tension there. And that just makes it easy to get the pulley off there. Should just be able to release that there. Here we go. Oops! Drop the belt pull. Drop the uh, pulley there. Oh, that'll come out in a second. Anyway, um, I'll grab that in a minute. I've got a hinge here. Loosen that. That comes right out. Hinge there. And now we should be able to remove the motor there so pull it to the right and it will swing off another hinge on the left hand side there there's the left hand hinge there and that locates into that little motor mount there and there's the, and there's the other motor mount that the right hand uh, mount that I just took out locates into there and I can see the the motor this uh, block here is in, in a pretty sorry state as I say I'll have a look and see whether I've got another one just two screws here just 
loosen those. They've got little little nuts that locate under the back here. Another one over here. Just there. And then this should just pull apart here. Just work that out there. This cap end cap comes off. Oh, something's there it comes. So this is a capacitor set here. There's one set. That's actually two capacitors. They'll be Y-class capacitors, two times 2,500 picofarad capacitors there. They look fine. They look intact. The culprit will be this, and you can see it blowing its guts there. Spewed its guts not looking good so let's get that out I think uh, I'll just snip that out and then see if I can uh, solder on the new capacitor I mean you could remove this capacitor and, and just do away with it and not replace it yeah but um, you know you could carry on using your machine at a pinch if you wanted to if you didn't have a replacement capacitor uh, but these these capacitors here are the cheapest chips um, you know readily available so I might as well do it since I've got one. That is a 0 0.022 microfarad. Uh, 0 0.022 microfarad. X2 class capacitor to pop back in there. Righty -o. Let's see if I can... Uh... Ooh, yes, thanks. Okay, I'm just going to clip that capacitor out. One there a bit hard to work on with the with it being in this little plastic casing here just make sure I don't clip any wires I don't need to <laughs> there we go yeah it's gone never seen inside a blowing capacitor there you go nasty okay 250 volt so we've got 275 volt AC here. So what I would like to do is just might just uh, strip back those yellow wires a little bit just so that I can solder this one here onto that connection. Just tin these leads up here. And then I'll just Crop these leads here off, uh, just take them back a little bit. Like that, turn these up here. One. And it doesn't matter which way these go on, uh, non-polarised capacitors. There. Okay, that's good there. Well and truly soldered on there. So I'll just pop that back into the little plastic holder there. And then we can pop the machine back together. Okay, and oh, while we're here, we could check the motor brushes. Uh, my favourite motor brush retaining system. I don't like these. This is the motor brush holder here. Not overly keen on these uh, tabs, as you may know. Uh, these little tabs here just bend the tab back so straighten straighten the tab there there's the spring has just popped out that's okay straighten up that tab just enough to get the brush out and it's not coming let me just so I'm just going to take note of the orientation you can see the little motor brush down in the hole there there's a groove cut on it which is facing the pulley side of the machine 
So here we go. And you can see that they wear unevenly. It's just a little bit more of a a little bit less worn on this side and I think that's because they're slightly off center when they run on the commutator. So that's looking good there. Plenty of life on that one. So we'll just pop that back with the groove facing the pulley end there. Drop that back in there. Put the spring back and then just bend that tab back over. whilst holding the spring in place. Hold your tongue the right way. Like that. Here we go, look. Singer Company, made in France. Hello to all my French viewers. So a French motor and a West German made machine. Uh, I've seen that actually in the 700 series machines as well. Let's put this back together here. Nice serviceable little motor that. I like it. Very neat. Very easy to get into. Oh, that's good. I've got a motor block. Last one in stock. I've got more on order. Replacement motor block there and I've got some more hinges, hinge bearings here. So might as well replace those while we're at it. This is quite a common sort of problem here. These get a little bit brittle. That's no worries, they're still available. Let's pop that in there. Be one of those. Let's get this hinge here out. Hinge bearing. That one. Pop a new one back in there. And we've got one. This one is just going to be stubborn, is it? Let's have a look. Yeah, it's breaking apart. Sort of a little bit powdery. A little bit of sort of powdery substance. This new hinge there, hinge bearing. So let's uh, put the motor back in. Place this back here. hinge back in here and we'll uh, get the motor pulley back on here first of all we'll retrieve the drive belt there now there's a flat on the shaft see there just a little flat there so the that allen grub screw needs to line up with that i'll do that once i get it on here Rotate that so that it's lined up with the flat there and then just push that on. You don't want to go right up to the motor but just close there to so leave a little gap in between the motor and the pulley. Let's tighten that grub screw there and then push in the little uh, adjuster pin there so the little eccentric pin there lines up with the motor block and push it in and then you can turn this to loosen or tighten the motor belt okay we'll just uh, tighten that belt so we don't want it too tight but not too loose either Give that a tighten, that's the locking 
scrub screw there. Flip the uh, little switch linkage there back on there. You better hook up the power there. Just like that. And I'm curious, curious as to what's in here. I can see a cable going into here. Just want to quickly have a look at this here. They're not batteries. They almost look like C size battery cells, but they're not. They are capacitors. Alco, 5,500 microfarad, 25 volts, West Germany. They will be the best of quality, I'm sure. Okay, nearly the moment of truth here. Just uh, put the panel back in here. There's two little clips to hold that panel there back on. The bottom cover there. There's a little safety reset switch here underneath as well. I guess that uh, pops out if there's a some sort of electrical fault or overload or something like that. Okay, going for gold here. Let's try the dog pattern. Uh, I've just got an old piece of scrap material here. See how we go. It was working before the capacitor blew, so hopefully. That's looking good there. Let's try the Greek key. Looking pretty good there. A little bit of a rattle, uh, but it's not too bad. It's, it's fairly quick, this machine, too. Quite impressive. And, you know, it's running fairly smoothly. Okay, there we go. All fixed and running nicely there. Let's see the, uh, the dog pattern there and the Greek key running nicely there so um, yep ran into a few issues uh, but you know worked my way through them and got a, a good machine there now so success there everything uh, worked out in the end uh, had a few issues we've got uh, the electronic uh, board issue with the zigzag not working properly sorted out we've got the tension working properly the buttons working properly and everything's uh, back up and running now after the capacitor blew. So um, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you very much to my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, please take a look at patreon.com forward slash sewing machines. And thank you very much for watching.